you are out with your partner, you see, and uh, you just met a beautiful woman, you go out together, you have a lo lovely meal, and then somehow some other lady sitting at the next table catches your eye, and your mind says, she likes you. <laughs> She likes you. Go and say hello. I'm on a date. Go, go, it's okay. Then you go over there and says hello, and she goes, What do you want? <laughs> and then the mind says, You should not have done that. what to do, what to say. Dear Beloved, Namaste, no questions in bracket anymore. Just came to spend a moment in silence with you, in recognition and gratitude. Peter, where is Peter? Okay, uh, please come. No questions anymore. I just came to spend a moment in silence with you, in recognition and gratitude. What have you found? Hmm? Recognition. to hear something. <laughs> Where did you come from, Peter? P-I-E-T-E-R, from? Holland, Holland, Holland. Holland. Hmm. If you've come all the way from Holland, just to spend one moment, <laughs> in silence with you, in recognition and gratitude. Then, you have had one moment. <laughs> And now I want to know in gratitude and recognition for what? Is the microphone there? <clears throat> for uh, finally finding out who I am, or what I am is a better description instead of who I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. After a whole life of searching, mm -hmm. I've come to realize what my essence is, who I am, what I am. And then all dramas and stories and all the projections, they just they don't make sense. They sort of slowly fall away. Sometimes they hunt me a little, but I just watch them and then they go. Mm. The only thing remains is like what to do. Because the relationships drop away, work drops away, identity. Sorry, what drops away? 
Will my relationships Relationship. drop away or the need for relationships? The need to drop away, okay. And, and also the need to work? The need to work. Yes, I have a career or a business that drops away. Mm. Actually, everything drops away. So for the last yeah. five years I've been in a void, just being. Yeah. Try yeah. to be calm and sit and just enjoy. Mm. But there is some unrest saying, well, mm. is there anything like a purpose? And I think I know it's not there. There is no purpose, external purpose, but there's something inside saying, what to do? Mm. Just sit and be, is that enough? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can sit and be. Yeah. Even a man in a wheelchair cannot sit and be. Mm. If this question still comes, see like this, um, something is there. So okay, now now what? What to do now? Now I know what I am. Now I know what I am. Uh, all these other things have fallen away. Job is gone. Relationships, they are not a need anymore. They may happen, but I hope it is like that. Not you say, I am never going to have one, but you know, but the need or any craving not there. And now, finally, everything has left you except one thing. What to do now? <laughs> what to do? And many people, even before coming to that place, they say, Well, okay, but what happens after this? <laughs> no, after. <laughs> because you're pointing to this thing. And we are, we are sort of sensing where you're going with all of this. Hmm? But when you get there to this final place, then what do you do? <laughs> so I say, why don't you? You have to have at least the courage to go there first. You find out for yourself. But they say, but maybe I won't like it if I go, because at least uh, when I am with my mind, my mind is always searching for something, and at least there is some amusement, some entertainment. How would you be when there's nothing to do? What do you do? When there's nothing to do? <laughs> well, it is not like that. It cannot be like that. The whole anxiety about what to do, and perhaps it will be a state of supreme and very divine boredom. So, I mean, what do you do? But this question would not be there. This question would not be there. Mm. The whole climate inwardly has changed. Mm. There is not uh, a cessation or an end of activity. Activities arise spontaneously in accordance with the, the law of the universe, and the flow of the vital force, it will happen. No? But something is here that makes such questions very silly questions. It would not even come what to do. It would not come. Boredom cannot come there. What to do cannot come. You see, who is to do? Who is to do? We honour activity as though it is a virtue, as though it is a virtue in itself. But you are not the doer of it, even though actions occur through this body. I don't want to go too much into this, because you will discover for yourself. And many of you have seen, anyway, that some force is carrying on, acting through this body, and all the bodies, it's working. Even in the ants, in the mosquito, in the clouds, it's moving. I once said many years ago, there is no cloud inside a cloud. There is no tree inside a tree. There is no man inside a man. There is only consciousness and the life force expressing. 
So this question, if it come, what to do, what to say, this comes from mind itself. You see, and how could mind has a, have a voice here? You see, because here he cannot come. In this place, he cannot come. The mind cannot intimidate the pure self. It can only intimidate the idea we have of who we are. That's the work of the mind. Mr. Mind will trouble there. And its work is to trouble there so that the true returns to itself, wakes up to itself. Its work is to tell you and bite you every time you come. It says, yes, every time you come to me, I'm going to bite you. And you say, oh, I don't want this. Because something keeps going there, aspiring. Yes, there's something I can get from this. Hmm? So, what to do? Enjoy yourself. And enjoy yourself. Perhaps it's the true meaning of the term to enjoy oneself. You're in the joy of your own self. And each thing that occur or happen expresses that joy of the self. It need not be excitement, but there is this unfading vibration of pure joy, emptiness. The absence itself of ego is liberation and pure joy. The freedom from the the hypnosis of conditioning and identity is itself a joy unequalled, you see. And in that pure state, or even I would say a stateless state, our own natural state, you see, there is no obsession about activity. Activities continue. They take on a new orientation, a new feeling inside one's being. And even if you had to do, if you were to sit here in a kind of imposed solitary confinement, you could not erase this joy and that inner space. I don't think anybody could describe it. I don't think the Buddha could describe this. He can only say, come and taste for yourself. You see? Like a young girl has fallen in love for the first time. She's full of love. And her family sees something different. Her younger sister says, What is it like? What is it like to be in love? Tell me. She says, I can't tell you. Says, but tell me something. Okay, it's like, you know, when. No, it's not like that. Okay, you. No, it's not like that. Ah. Yes, yes. Okay. No, it's not like that. Actually, you just have to wait until you fall in love. <laughs> then you will know. <laughs> then how are we attracted to that? Even in satsang, as again uh, your attention is driven back into the very core of your being, that taste is following your your inner looking. There is a space opening up, there is a joy emerging. The falling away of concerns, of plans, of need, of attachments, but not of love. But all things are falling away. And if everything fell away, then a great discovery is made when you find that which cannot fall away and find, I am here. And that will not ask this question, what to do, <laughs> what to say. Who is to say? <coughs> Speaking happens, actions will happen, but they simply happen as a matter of course. Guided and driven by some unseen power, they are just happening. Everything is expressed like this. I want you to quickly come to this place. You long, some place inside you long to be reminded of what we imagine we have lost. Hmm.
So that which says what to do, you say just this thing. Yes, the questions have slowed down. They've fallen away. The needs for relationship or other things they seem to have just diminished. Mind comes a little bit. No big deal. But this thing remains. What to do? Yes. Who is it speaking to? Well, it's it's still the mind, obviously, um, because I've been in this space now for five years, just enjoying every day and just mm. see all the dramas and turbulence around me and just stay mm. put. Mm. And slowly it, it fades away, as you say. Mm -hmm. So I've had blissful moments, beautiful moments. All these things come and go. Mm -hmm. um, but at a certain point, there's, there's, there's my mind plus a lot of my friends who say, "Well, there's got to be a purpose to be on this planet yeah. to either help help people, do charity, whatever." So I know it's not true. When I'm in my essence, mm -hmm. there's nothing to be done. It's just pure right. being. Just be is enough. Yeah. But still, these ideas come. They now come because you said something when I'm in my essence. Yes. You see, this is what strikes me. When I'm in my essence. Why when? When is time? So when I go there, I'm fine. So when I'm not there, how you are not there? Then you must find out what happened. When I'm there, I'm fine. Yeah. Who is speaking also like this? This is a very important thing. When I am there, when my attention, when my sense of self consciously reverses back into my real place, then I see there is only this. There is no concern, there is no what to do, nothing. I am just here. I am not stuck here, but I am here. Irrespective of what this body is doing, inwardly, uh, I am in total solitude and peace, even though actions are taking place. It is not, I am here when I make a lotus. And No, I am here when I am climbing a tree or cleaning the bathroom, I am here. You see? And you say, and only because of that, then the voice of these friends, which is also consciousness speaking through, testing it out, you see. But you are here for a purpose, you know. You cannot just sit on a shelf, shining. <laughs> the world needs people to go forward and rescue us. <laughs> and something inside says, I know, but what is the purpose? Well, actually, you have already solved the purpose. You have made use of your purpose. Or let's put it another way, opportunity. This purpose is very grand. You know. And this is troubling a lot of people. What is your purpose? Why well, you have to have a purpose? No, but one should have a purpose, you know? So that we know that you've been here, you did something, you left something on the earth, and uh, farewell, very good. <laughs> but what a burden to have a purpose. What is purpose? Like if someone told you, okay, your purpose should be, you will be the local baker <laughs> forever. My God, I mean, is that beautiful? <laughs> Maybe your purpose will change from time to time, yeah? in accordance with the flow of life and change and the vital force and so on. Is it, is it so appealing to have a purpose? Your purpose is to save some country. Then the country becomes free afterwards. That was my purpose. <laughs> Well, we don't need you no more. <laughs> That's your purpose. <laughs> so it has burdened a lot of people this this concept that you know you must have a purpose. And many people from childhood also, we have been told something. You see this if. Yes, even your parents tell you. You see, if you want to be important in life. Then you must go and study and get your exams and so on. If if you want to be really loved and please us, then you must do your homework and 
clean your room and uh, if you want to be whatever and we accept it because it comes through clearly from people you who love you but when you put this thing if you want to be important means you're not presently important child doesn't really figure it out in the head but there's an intuitively there's something that says well as i am not enough if you want to be loved and accepted then you must be like this and this and this some of it is good some conditioning is clearly good to show concern for others and so on so this is good myself i feel my life has benefited from that but when it becomes like an if this then this and so we grew up with this and now you got a beard and people are still saying what is your purpose you see and maybe your purpose doesn't align with their concept of what a purpose is you're not quite reached the purpose bracket yet okay <laughs> you're not on the purpose level yet you're still on kind of flirting about you need a purpose boy <laughs> so this is coming from past somewhere maybe something came like this and are we happy with an unfulfilled purpose and who has found their purpose in life so i feel that this thing is just to check and see will you fully embrace yourself as you are or do you need to listen to some part of the mind which is saying but you may realize yourself but but what is your purpose can there be a greater purpose if you want to use the word than a human being coming to the full realization of the self if if that has happened and clearly something is somehow blocking the full acceptance because it puts this puts this doubt forward and you have purchased it on some level and the reason why this is is that you said something more important than that you say when i am that when i am in the self when i am myself well why when why part time you part time self or what that you say when i come is not good enough you see you know oh i know because when i get back to myself i see everything is cool but why do you go out and who goes out and can you be have a, can you be the self that is the self and not the self and the self and not the self or isn't this also just an idea like space sometimes not space sometimes space becomes wind you see is it true the the wind needs space in order to express windiness but space does not need the wind in order to be space judge which is the greater you see something it seems to be going in and out and there's an identity formed with that movement so the feeling i am moving about is then believed and what trouble it causes that which is aware of the moving in and outness of an apparent i that is unconquerable but something is still feeding an idea that maybe it's not enough maybe it is not enough to to simply know the self and to be the self and my question is do you really know are you really the self because if you are the self how can you be the non self consciously yeah, you follow or not you follow or not yeah i i think the reason i brought up the question is about the doubt mm. that's what i felt mm. because when when my mind tells me these things like you should have a purpose do this or that or friends tell me i know it's not true mm. i feel that i feel like no i'm not going to move where i sit unless mm. something comes listen, to me listen listen yes it's it's true but listen the mind can only speak and bring a doubt when there is a possibility of doubt suppose the man the mind comes and says uh, you're such a beautiful woman <laughs> huh 
would you have some doubt? <laughs> no, I have no doubt. So how can it raise a doubt? <laughs> Hello darling, how are you doing? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> you have no doubt about whether you are a man or a woman. You have no doubt about this. Hmm? But the mind says, you know, huh, you got a purpose. Where's your purpose, huh? And huh. So who is doubting? Is it the self that can experience this kind of duality? Like, am I the self? Oh, no, no, cannot be. Can the mind say to yourself, are you the self? You sure? <laughs> Unless there's a belief that perhaps I'm not 100% the self, which could only come from the mind. And mind is going to play with you like this. You're out with your partner, you see? And uh, you just met a beautiful woman. You go out together, you have a lo lovely meal, and then somehow some other lady sitting at the next table catches your eye, and your mind says, She likes you. <laughs> she likes you. Go and say hello. You say, but no, no, I'm on a date. <laughs> go, go, it's okay. Then you go over there and says hello and she goes, what do you want? <laughs> and then the mind says, you should not have done that. <laughs> so the same thing is happening. It will play with you because there is some room. <laughs> there is some room in you for some duality and it actually is serving a good purpose actually. It is showing that, wait, something is not firm here. So we can even thank the mind for that, which, which is nothing other than a servant of consciousness. We are, I don't know if we have reached this place, we are that which exposes what is inconsistent in ourselves. When it is brought to light, that we can say, thank you for showing this, rather than out there you, it's you, rather than, whoa, to, to bring it inside and to look. What here doubts, you know? And is it that realizing the self is about conviction and determination? And whose determination is it? And whose conviction is it? Is it the self's conviction? Is it the pure being's conviction? Is it the, does the pure being need to be determined about something? This is your, this is your way of checking. The mind is outside again. He's been <laughs> from last time. <laughs> this is the last thing maybe to finish up. Don't entertain that because this can go on. This can go on. Actually something is exposing a thing that you can chop and recognize. Good. Very good, Peter. Thank you. We honor activity as though it is a virtue, as though it is a virtue in itself but you are not the doer of it, even though actions occur through this body. I don't want to go too much into this, because you will discover for yourself. And many of you have seen, anyway, that some force is carrying on, acting through this body, and all the bodies, it's working. Even in the ants, in the mosquito, in the clouds, it's moving. I once said many years ago, there is no cloud inside a cloud, there is no tree inside a tree. There is no man inside a man. There is only consciousness and the life force expressing.